Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. Now this tutorial is going to go through some rigging tips and tricks with regards to rigging in Creature. I recommend watching this tutorial if you're already familiar with the rigging process in Creature, but I'm going to go through some more concepts that are probably helpful and some shortcuts that you might find useful in rigging your character. So again, if you haven't actually begun rigging in Creature, I actually recommend watching the earlier tutorials, the introduction tutorials on how to rig in Creature. Okay, so all right, so without fur further ado, let's get started. So when you rig in Creature, there ha you have many options. Now the first thing you want to understand is the difference between the region mode and the bone mode, right? So as you know, everything in Creature is composed of a mesh, right? So when you are in the region mode of rig, what you're actually doing is you're essentially adding in a bunch of meshes from meshing into your rig, right? You're basically like adding them. So you go to add region, and as the, uh, uh, the earlier tutorials suggest, you select your region meshes that you care about, and then you add them into the scene, okay? Now let's go through some basic shortcuts that you might find useful. So for each region, obviously you can do a bunch of transformations with it. You can translate, rotate, and scale with it, right? You can click these buttons, or you can use the shortcuts. Shortcuts are Alt-A, so Alt-A switches between the different transformation modes. And so this allows you to very quickly, essentially, transform your different meshes. Right, very, very easily. You can also actually just rotate by dragging the circular ring around, so you don't even need to actually switch modes if all you want to do is translate and rotate. Okay, so that's that's a tip for you. I can switch back to scale and scale it back down. All right, so this this is basically the region mode stuff which you should care about. Okay, and there are options to actually do flipping, so you can actually flip between the X and Y, for example, right? So that's useful, right? You can also tone down the alpha. This is a pure visualization feature. It doesn't actually translate to opac opacity animation animate mode, take note. However, it's very useful if you have layers and layers of meshes, mesh regions that you're adding into your character. And you want to visualize what's beneath the character. For example, the leg here, the, the, the real leg is, is being covered by the front front leg, right? So sometimes you, if you want to see what's behind it, you can actually just fade it out very easily. So this is to help you in, in rigging, okay? All right, so this, and, oh, and also if you want to change the ordering, ordering of the different mesh regions, obviously you can click on move back and move front, but the shortcut keys are just as simple. Just hold on shift and go page up and page down. So if I do shift page up, it moves it to the back, page down, moves it to the front, okay? So very, very useful shortcuts that can easily get you to the results you want much more, much more quick, much more quickly. Okay, let's switch to the bone mode. So in bone mode, this is where you actually place your skeleton and you make your skeleton bind with the meshes from the region mode, right? And of course, you understand how it works. I assume you've watched the er earlier tutorials. One key point I want to note is it's always very helpful to have a base base root bone that, it's, that, that is located away from the character so you can use this for global translation. So in general when I author my characters, I recommend when you author your characters, it's always useful to create a base root bone. The first bone should always be placed away from the character you can use for global translation and then you start placing bones in the character itself. All right. Okay, and so let's play around with this actually. So there are a couple things, right? So when you when you place the first bone, the next thing you probably want to do is to actually create the next bone. So you probably click on create and then you probably just go drag another bone, drag another bone, and so on and so forth, right? And if you want to delete them, you can click on one of the bones and press delete and that blows it away, right? But again, if you want to avoid mouse clicking, there are shortcuts for it. So Alt-C will get you to bone creation mode. Alt-S will get you to bone selection mode. And Alt-W, I believe, gets you to, there you go, bone waiting mode. So again, by clicking on the, using these shortcuts, again, Alt-C, creation, Alt-S, selection, and Alt-W, waiting, you can very easily do selection and 
creation without actually moving a mouse to the top toolbar buttons, right? So I can easily say, okay, I want this guy, Alt C, and I create, 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 Alt S, this guy, and then Alt C, create, 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 right? Just, at a, just at a, as an example. Okay, so that's a useful tip, the shortcut keys for bone creation, selection, and weighting. The other thing which is probably very useful for you is you have these global translation transformation handles for your bones. So let's say you have a different character, you want to size it globally, you can just drag on one of the handles and I can actually just move, size all the bones globally based off this bounding box, which is very, very useful, especially when you want to size it to a different character mesh. Okay? Right. And also, there's this very useful facility, the testing mode, which I highly recommend, because after you do waiting, you should always test your character to s characters to see how they might behave before you throw it into animation mode. So this actually allows you to verify the waiting. This is just a test, okay? So it's a preview and might not reflect completely what your character will look like, but in general, it's a good idea, it's a very good idea to run it through the test mode just, just to make sure your waiting is behaving correctly. Okay, so that, that, that's basically the bone creation and selection mode. Now, when you do bone creation, right, when I create a bone and I go to create mode, you notice there's, 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 this, there's this combo box on the right. It says create, create with weight region. So by default, when you create a bone, as you know, the, the bone is assigned to all regions. And the, in the tutorials, I mentioned that you have to go into waiting mode and you can obviously change the affected regions, right? By, by switching them up using the, the affected regions button. But you can also save yourself some time by if you know, for example, that this bone, all the bones I'm going to create here, for example, let's, let's do a test. Let me select the bone over here and I know I'm going to create another chain of bones down this tail to make it even more floppy, to give it, give it more of a flashy motion. Now if I do know, for example, that all the bones I'm going to create down the tail are always going to be associated with the tail. So what this means is I can already assign those regions. So I can come in here and change the combo box to point to say the torso because the tail is part of the torso. So this means that when I do my creation, every single bone that I create in in this instance is always going to be torso, right? So if we click on this and now go to wait, immediately you already see it's assigned to torso. So you don't have to reassign the affected regions. You can just do it directly from the creation mode. Now you cannot reassign, sorry, but you can but every new bone that you create will be assigned to this new region, if you understand what I'm saying. So this will probably save you lots of time because for example if you're creating bones for the leg, you probably just go in and first select, say, front leg BG and you start creating your bones and every single bone you create will be assigned to front leg front front leg BG right and of course you want to switch back just go back to all regions which means every single bone you create from then on is going to be assigned to all regions so that's another helpful tip for you all right so let's talk about waiting let's talk about waiting so in waiting mode there are a couple things you should know first first of all how to switch between bones, right? Very important. Hold on shift and click on the bone you want to switch to. That's the most important thing you need to understand how to do. The other, the other, the other way you can do it is to use the box on the right, this hierarchical tree view, and to switch between your bones. Or you can just simply hold on shift and click. All right? All right? Okay, so that's how you switch between bones. The other thing you should understand or know about is this helpful printout on the upper left over here. Every time you select a bone for waiting, it's going to show you what regions it's assigned to. So this will easily allow you to debug. Let's say you have your bones assigned to the wrong regions, you don't know why. Well, you can easily debug and find out what bones are assigned to what. Okay, so that's a very helpful tip. So, and the other thing I believe you have is, let's see, I also have another tool for you called bones to affected regions table. If you click on that, now this actually shows you an entire table of what bones are assigned to what regions. So you can do actual assignment and actual checking of you know who is assigned to whom very very easily 
for from a very global perspective. Okay, so this is another very useful tool. There's many, many multiple, many tools in Creature that can use to debug bone high, bone assignment, bone weight assignment, actually specifically. So this is another tool we can use to see. Oh, okay, so rear leg BG, front leg BG, and torso are, are assigned to whom, and say bone two is only assigned to torso. You can easily tell who is assigned to whom over here in this table over here. So you have many, many options to do your region debugging and assignment. All right. Okay, so that goes with that. And the other thing that you should know is you can also do group assignment. So you hold down the control key and then you can just select your bones and then you click on group assign, group region assign. This is covered again but in the tutorials, which then allows you to select a region that you can do a mass, mass assignment with. Right? You click cancel to get out of that mode. Okay, so that's bone weight assignment. Let's talk about the weighting modes now. There are two modes, auto and manual. Right? Let's talk about auto, because actually this is the mode that I recommend you start off first. The auto weighting algorithm in Creature is actually quite advanced and it it will not fail. <laughs> okay, when you when you do auto weighting it will always arrive at a reasonable solution in its best accord. Now there are a couple of options on the right. There's iterations, radius, and influence. I always recommend iterations to be the maximum unless you're a very slow machine. So by default, it's always set to the maximum. What you really care about are radius and influence. And let's do a couple of experiments with it to understand what it actually means. Okay? So if we increase the radius, okay, and if you click apply, apply means just applying the auto weighting to that single bone. If you click apply to all, it's going to apply weighting to every single bone. It's going to auto weight every single bone based on their regions, right? But now we're actually going to be applying a weight only for this bone. So we're going to click apply. So click apply. You noticed because the radius is larger, right? So now the weights, the auto weighting algorithm actually applies it to a much larger radius, but also bleeds into the neighboring vertices that are outside this radius, that's because there's an influence about it, right? It's because it's got high influence. So if we increase the influence and click apply, you see it bleeds out even more. So influence is how much it bleeds out to its neighboring vertices. So in, in other words, I can actually decrease the influence and I click apply. Now you noticed with low influence, because it's not really influencing anything outside this radius, there's less bleeding, it's, it's actually the, the weights are mostly concentrated within this radius. Okay, that's a very helpful tip. In other words, if you want to actually control how much it's bleeding, you control the influence, right? And so if you want smooth weights, you have a, some, some sort of an intermediary value. So it, it bleeds out somewhat, because you still want some influence, right? But also mostly it's mostly concentrated within the radius. Now if you want it to be fully within the radius, you take the influence down, and then it's fully concentrated there. Okay, so that's what auto weighting does, and it does a couple of very sophisticated things behind the scenes to ensure that you have decent weights based off the radius and influence values. But in general, it actually gives you really, really good results. That's why I highly recommend. Now, the other option you can do, of course, is manual weighting. Creature doesn't actually tell you you have to use auto weighting. If you want to do manual weighting, please go ahead. And so, manual weighting is literally just manual weighting, right? So you can obviously up the weight of it and you start painting. You literally just start painting based off your radius and how hard your brush brush strokes are. So these, these are just your default paint brush options. Right? So you can actually paint different weights onto your vertices. So that's that's basically just manual painting. Right? And then of course if you paint it a lot and you want to smooth it out, just click smooth weights and you click that repeatedly, you'll just smooth out the values over the the connected vertices. Okay, so that w between auto weighting and manual weighting, that gives you a ton of options. Okay, and so that basically concludes the rigging tips tutorial. And of course, don't forget to always do testing in the testing mode just to make sure your weights are reasonable. Okay, all right, so I hope you found this tutorial very useful and look out for more tips and feature shortcut tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching.